Hey everybody, Steph here, and I haven't made a heart video in a while, so let's do one. Today we're going to make river rock hearts, and then what I'm going to do is show you how you can embellish them in a couple of ways to make them a little less plain, if you want. Me, I like plain river rock, but not everybody does. So, originally I thought a river rock reaction was something unique to Bullseye, and then I was talking to my glass wife, Linda, and she says that no, it's not. Uh, you can get reactions out of System 96 as well. Now, I don't know what you'd do to get river rock out of 96, but I'm sure somebody out there has an answer. Um, in Bullseye, you use French vanilla frit or a sulfur-bearing frit, and then you mix it with a lead-bearing powder. In my case, I'm going to use uh, Sunset Coral today. And the two mix. The result is something that's, well, not unlike river rocks. It looks pretty cool. Um, when I first learned how to do fused glass back in 2012, river rock reaction was a fairly new reaction. And everybody and their dog was doing river rock. Um, I went to a glass guild show at the Portland Convention Center... And almost every booth had River Rock, and it was really wicked cool. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I wanted to do it, so I bought the stuff, and then I never did it. These days, though, I don't see a whole lot of River Rock. So I thought it might be fun to showcase an easy project or two to do with it, and at the same time, double dip into a heart video, because I do a lot of heart videos. So let's get started. You're going to need French vanilla fit in fine, medium, and coarse, and a lead-bearing powder. So like I said, I'm using Sunset Coral here because this is what the Bullseye Quick Tip Sheets used. So that's what I bought the pound of. Um, but there are other options, and if you use a check a Bullseye Reaction page, uh, the Bullseye Reaction Chart, uh, which I'll link down below, you can get all sorts of them. Uh, for a... Firelight 7055 mold, um, the hearts weigh about 30 grams a piece, so not quite an ounce, but I'm only going to use 8 ounces of frit, so these are going to be slightly smaller hearts, uh, but that's still fine. There'll still be plenty of it because I'm going to embellish some of them and some I'm going to send off to a friend. Um, and I'm going to use a slightly different mix than most people do. Most people use an even mix of about a little over two and a half ounces of fine, medium, and coarse. I am actually using today four ounces coarse frit, two ounces medium frit, and two ounces fine frit. And this happens to be an eight ounce jar. I'm gonna shake it up real good. Why am I using more coarse frit, double the coarse to the medium and the fine? Well, I tend to find that when you use too much fine frit, it tends to turn to sand. The fine frit tends to take over and you get a really sandy look, and I'm not wild about that. So I'm using extra coarse for this so we get bigger chunks that look more like rocks in it and less like a sandy bottom. Um, you, of course, your mileage can vary. Um, so you do you, boo. Um, but to this eight ounces, you're gonna wanna add your Sunset Coral. And what you would add is 5% per weight of frit. So if this was a 10 ounce jar, it would be a half an ounce of Sunset Coral. So since I used eight ounces and eight times 0.5 is 0.4, we're putting in 0.4 ounces of Sunset Coral. That's about two big scoops, a little more, three big scoops. Yeah, a little more than three big scoops. So there we go, 0.414 ounces. That's enough. i put my handy dandy scale out of the way. If you don't have one of these little jeweler scales, this is a G dealer, made in China, about 20 bucks on Amazon. Okay, so, whoops, that's gonna be exciting. Well, while I'm cleaning this up, one of the things you need to do with your frit mixture is you need to get it wet. Because it's not going to stick. The powder will not stick to your frit mixture unless it's wet. 
And the easiest way to do that is to use water. Me, I can't do anything easy. So give me just a moment while I make terrible scraping noises. Good thing my table is halfway clean right now. Okay, I can't do anything easy. I use glass cleaner, don't scream. Um, my water is terrible. I do not have a second uh, spray bottle handy. Well, I do have a second spray bottle handy. It's also full of glass cleaner. So I just use glass cleaner. In about 30 of these firings, it's worked out just fine. I don't recommend you do what I do. I think you should do what I say. Use a spray bottle full of water. Um, you could probably use rubbing alcohol, but it might evaporate if you've got leftovers. So you may not want to if you think you're going to have leftovers. So now your fritz wet. Throw in some sunset coral. I wouldn't recommend putting all of it in at once because otherwise it's going to clump. Shake. See, you can see it's kind of clumpy in spots. I probably should have used a bigger jar. Usually I use a one pound jar, but I didn't happen to have one handy. Uh, I haven't been through a one pound jar of frit lately. Although I do see a few with like a half inch in the bottom that I should just suck, you know, suck it up and uh, finish off. So shake some more. You can see where the sunset coral is sticking, so you'll want to shake well and scrape that off. Or use a finger because, you know, ground glass and fingers work so well together. I'm having a day, can you tell? So that's the last of the sunset coral. Shake like crazy. Shake like crazy. And I'm sure everybody's tired of the sound. And voila, pinkish powder. That is pretty well distributed sunset coral. So that's gonna be plenty for your molds. And from here, I'm using a Firelight 7055. It is my go-to mold for all of my Kickstarter hearts. And I start with just a big spoonful in each. Just to lay the groundwork. That first one didn't get a big spoonful. And then make the terrible noise because I've got glass all over my desk, but that lays it down. And then from there, I just throw things around and layer my hearts in. I try to go evenly one spoon at a time. That way I don't give one heart all of the cool frit and, you know, somebody else gets left with the dregs. So there we go. And then I just sort of work the molds full and I keep dumping frit in. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of air in this mixture because it is wet and it is a mixture of powder through coarse that these hearts will sink down. So you're going to want to probably mold, build them up a bit in the middle and you will probably want to make sure that your heart uh, firing schedule has a bubble squeeze built in. I use a standard firing schedule, 400 an hour to 1225, hold for an hour as a bubble squeeze and then up to full fuse temperature and then down to uh, an anneal hold for, I hold for two hours because these generally can get pretty thick. Uh, now these hearts shouldn't be too thick, but honestly a little extra annealing never hurt anybody. And then I, it's the summer, so I don't, as I'm filming this, so I don't, I just shut off my kiln and let it cool. But in the winter, I tend to go 100 degrees an hour to 700 and then off. Um, but like I said, in the summer, I just turn it off and let it cool because it's warm enough outside that my kiln is not going to try and spontaneously cool and crack my glass. Um, but if you're watching this and it's winter where you are, or it's winter time, you know, because you're watching this later or you're in the southern hemisphere, and you know, in July... Uh, be care, you know, be conservative. Uh, but what I'm going to do is finish these up, pop them in the kiln, and then I will be back to show you the finished hearts. Okay, so here are the finished hearts. 
I think they look great. And with the eight ounces of frit, you still get a pretty substantial heart. I would bet these are six to seven millimeters thick, but you can fuse some that are thinner. This one is a little bit thinner, probably closer to six. This side's thinner than this side. Um, but these are really great and I like them as they are. These little bits of leftover river rock will end up in one of my jars as a um, frit for people to play with. But there's a few things you can do to jazz up these hearts. I'm only taking one out round because that's all I need. Um, I mean, you can give them out free, or not free, plain. You can give them out free too, I'm not your mother, and I give them out free. But one thing I was thinking would be kind of fun is a heart within a heart. So I have this little freezing fuse heart I made from a mold my mother gave me. And I thought I'd just plunk a heart in the middle of it. Of course you can make the hearts in any color, but isn't that cute? Um, easy, simple, quick. I'd tack fuse this so you still have the texture to it. So move that one to one side. The next one I was gonna do would be a Jeep duck. If you have a Jeep, you know. But if you don't, here's what I have found out from Jeep, from Jeep owners. My cousin owns a Jeep and she's been bitten by the glass bug. Um, you leave a duck on somebody's Jeep if you think their Jeep is cool. So what they do is they leave little rubber ducks. She wants to do something different. What she wanted originally was for me to pull some Urini in the shape of a duck. Which is great, but I haven't even set my vitrograph kiln up, so I am not an expert in making ducks. So what we thought we'd do is, this is a little freeze and fuse mold. It's just the right size for me to put little duck freeze and fuses, get them ready and tack fuse them, and then tack fuse onto a heart. And then she can leave rock hearts because jeeps go bouldering and off-roading all the time so she can leave rock hearts with ducks on them as a hey i like your jeep and a unique situation i just haven't had any time to freeze and fuse actually by the time you see this i will have been less than 12 hours out well no by the time i'm filming this i'm less than 12 hours out of surgery and i will be roughly a day out of surgery by the time you see this so that's another option and then a third one that I like to suggest is that you flower up your hearts. Um, I did a couple of these for my Kickstarter. People really love the River Rock, but they wanted the idea of flowers growing in the cracks of the rock. So I did a few and folks were happy, but I did learn a bit from it. Um, the Marini will like to jump, so you need to cluster it well and be prepared to fire a couple of times just in case, because sometimes they will fall off. And if you're not careful, you end up with ones like this. And well, they kind of look like mammaries. That's boobies, if you're not familiar with the term. Lopsided nipples, but the heart now looks like boobs. So I recommend clustering a few or fusing a couple of times. I have one here where the Murini stayed. Let's see if I can pull it down so you can see it better. The Murini stayed. Uh, but I didn't put anything else on it, so I did a little bit of stringer and a couple of leaves, and I'm going to tack fuse this and see how they turn out in the end. I think they're going to be really cute that way, and I think some people are really going to love them. So that's my goal. So there you have it. Some options for river rock hearts to spice them up or just keep them plain. There's nothing wrong with any of these options. And now you have a bit of a river rock tutorial. Um, like I said, I've always wanted to do River Rock, and now I'm finally doing a lot of it, and I love it. And if you ever want to get into River Rock, I have kits in my shop from a sampler of three ounces all the way up to a pound where you can buy it and dabble in the River Rock. Everything you need is included, except the sampler kits don't have a jar, um, so you'll need a small jar for that. But everything else comes, it comes with your powder already measured, the fritz and bags, and instructions and then also links to the uh, bullseye quick tips and links to these videos. I will also send them to you via message if you buy off Etsy so you can just click the links. So if River Rock seems sort of intimidating, it shouldn't be. It's very easy and I highly recommend you do it. Why do I have a weird little... oh it's on my camp. It's on my phone. I'm sorry. I'm 12 hours out of surgery and a little loopy. But anyway, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Hey, it's Steph and I appreciate you watching my video. 
YouTube will recommend another one down below, so if you want to keep watching, just click on it.